subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. What up, look this Seagull, check this out. I'm out here rocking with my people down in Houston, you know what I'm saying? Today, I gave them some real game on the history, you know what I'm saying? The Seagull, the concentration camp, you know what I'm saying? So, rock with me. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Down Houston Podcast. I am Down Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, first of all, I got my boy Sison here one more time. What's going down, man? Back at it, back at it, you know, back, back with the boot crew. For sure, for <laughs> sure, man. Hey, we in Baton Rouge today, man. Back uh, with the camp. Say, man, uh, see Loke, what's going down, man? Man, working, man. I'm still out here, still blessed to be here. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Still watching them come, watching them go. You know what I'm saying? Still running it up at the same time, you know? For sure, for sure, for sure, man. So what, what's, what's you still on music or what's going man, on? Man, I'm still on music. You know, I got some other ventures and stuff like that, too. But, you know, my music still, that's my main thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Been in the game 30 years and... Put out 36 albums. I'm working on album 37. Never signed with a label. Own every copyright to every song I ever put out. You know what I'm saying? You know, still trying to build up my catalog. Keep that going. You know, that's for the great grandbabies. You know what I'm saying? We talking about we talking about 30 years. So that so like we was just saying before we started your first album with the Pen and Pixel. That was that was 1994. I put that album. It's called Who's Gonna Ride. I put it out in 1994. But I started working on it like in 19, maybe late 92 or something. So 93 was when I came out and did the artwork with Pen and Pixel and all that. You, that's that's way back, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I can't believe you was around then, Don. I mean, I was a kid, but I, I know about it, its legacy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, yeah, I, and I know yeah, Robert Gilliman, yeah. and we, you know, he told me about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, Rob. Oh, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Everybody Rob. know Rob if oh, he was yeah. in the game back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob's still on the phone. Yeah. Rob's still on my phone. Yeah, for my sure. bad. For sure, for sure. Make sure I got mine out. Yeah, but um, yeah. Okay, so man, take me back just t- to Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? Before we even get to that, take me to your <sighs> just upbringing and how we how we got to that point. Uh, you mean as far as just as, growing up? Like, how how was your life in Baton Rouge? Uh, like before you before like leading up to music and all that. Man, leading up to music, you know, I was one of them kids who kind of like um. When they like eight, nine years old, you're on the block and it's like this little kid out there, we out there all night and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was that kid right there. So, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, in the streets kind of young because I ain't really know my, my mom and my daddy like that, you know what I'm saying? So I was in the streets like kind of young. So while I was out, I just started kind of hustling. I'm glad I took the hustle route and not, you know, a lot of other routes they took, you know what I'm saying? But I started to hustle. And I always had these ideas, and I'm always just trying them, you know what I'm saying? I was always that kid, you know, selling snacks, and you know what I'm saying? Went from that to other stuff, man. And by the time I was a teenager, I had stacked up a few dollars. And uh, once I started seeing these other labels, I honestly, E-40, sick with it, was probably the first label I saw that I was like, hey, I could do that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I never wanted to be a rapper, ever. And this is and this is what age when you when you talking about this right? I now. was probably about eighteen, yeah, about eighteen. About now, 18, when you say you say you had stacked up a little bit of money, some tell me this wasn't a little bit of money. Nah, nah. <laughs> that's what started later. You know what I'm saying? But 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 I I was young and I was doing good, but you know I I didn't drift off into a whole bunch of foolishness. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, look, I want to do something, man. That's just like gonna make an impact. So I was watching like E40, and I was watching like uh, uh even rap a lot, stuff like that, man. And that inspired me, like, man, they doing labels. You know, a lot of people want to rap and stuff like that. That wasn't my thing. That wasn't what I wanted to do at all. So. Uh, I think I had went and bought a studio when I was like 18, 19, and it was, uh, I spent like maybe 40, 50 grand on a, on a studio. And I had called myself getting some rappers and them coming in, man, that's work, you know, stuff like that. And uh, that's when I learned that, you know, the hustle around the game, not talent, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I bought the studio, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of rappers who blew up over the years probably started the same way with, with, yeah. with the hopes of, putting out artists and all that and realize that man that hustle you use to get you know all this stuff that you got is the hustle that's going to take to move forward in music you know what i'm saying so they wouldn't come in they wouldn't work you know what i'm saying stuff like that so we just used to get full come from the club and go in the studio since i got the studio now we just go in the studio and clown around and mess around eventually i start just clowning on the mic and rapping you know what i'm saying and uh the shit kind of caught on. Like, they was like, man, that shit dope, you know? And I, I didn't give a damn about rapping at all. I never desired to be a rapper, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, 
my first album was not supposed to be my album. It was supposed to be uh, for one of my artists. But I ended up just making a bunch of songs myself and putting them out. And it was a song on there called uh, I Want to Be a G. This was 1994. And uh, the hook used to be saying, huh, what, huh, what? And, and the actual huh, what came from when we used to go to the club. That's how we found each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if I come in the club, I'm looking for you. I would just yell, huh? And you would yell, what? Like way from the other side. That's how we mm -hmm. found the other club. So we just did a song, climbing around in the studio with it. And it caught on in Baton Rouge, you know? And, shit, and shit. this wasn't no click thing. This was like in the city. This how, this how everybody kind of rock. Like no, 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 no. This was my squad mm -hmm. communicated like that. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't nothing like everybody got in the club and said that. This was how my squad rock. So I put it in a song. And when I put the song out, man, that shit caught on, man. And that was my first project 1994 a lot of people have their first projects and it's like they don't really see success but my first project man i think i sold like 11,000 cds like like the first like maybe six months now to do the math back then we got like ten dollars a cd and i ain't pay but a dollar to press it up you know what i'm saying so i spent eleven thousand and i got a hundred and ten thousand back you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, sir. So I was sold on the music then, you know what I'm saying? And then people start paying me to come do shows and stuff on top of that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, most people probably would want it to seem like, okay, I had this bright idea, I was smart. I stumbled up on a lot of this shit and just was smart enough to, you know, just, just, just push take advantage forward of it. and yeah. take advantage of it, you know what I'm saying? But uh, shit, man, that's how it happened for me. That's how I got into the game. So once that happened, I just kept recording, kept going in my studio recording. Started making beats like uh, KLC, yeah. Beats by the Pound. That's who taught me yeah. how to uh, like make beats. You know what I'm saying? So you, you going to New Orleans and linking up with them? Or are you, oh, yeah, are you all the time. Them I was on? back and forth. Bat Rouge, New Orleans. <laughs> I, I recorded with Sice yes. 30 years ago. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so I was always yes. back. Sice shot my first video Yeah. for that album, Who's Gonna Ride? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He shot my first video. Wait, wait, wait. Sice, tell me what you were shooting this video on. Like. I forgot. It's, that's what I'm saying. I done forgot more Man. stuff than I can. Than I did. It was what we were shooting on there. We I don't were know. shooting on but something. But we had the big ass tape though. I know yeah, that. Yeah, it was one. Of, it was a beta. It was the big beta camera yeah. from uh, from the television station. Like had a bunch of equipment at uh, Cox oh. production room from Will Horn. From Will Horn. Yep. <laughs> so I had. Yep. I had. You know. I had access. You know. I had access. You know. I had access. You gonna find out a lot of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My my first video I ever did, Sight shot my first video. Yes. And we out there <laughs> acting out scenes in the middle of the, I can't remember what street we was on. We on Barone. We in the hood hood. <laughs> we in the hood. Wait, hood. What song was this? Uh a song called Who's Gonna Rap. Is it is it on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't we're know if the video the on that though. Yeah. I doubt that because YouTube, we you know, we were even thinking about YouTube. Well, back I always then, you know, call but, when he when it's when he ever call and I pick up the phone, know what I answer. I say, "What's up, boss?" Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. he always been bossed up from the time I met him, and I seen him go through all the phases, and I just sit back and just be like, "What up, boss?" <laughs> yeah, I work. I try he to showed stay. up one day. He showed up with Master P. Oh yeah, that, was that your first time meeting Master P? First time ever. <laughs> I brought he him to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, meet me after I need to use yeah. this spot. Uh -huh. I need you to record us. Woo, ah, woo. Uh -huh. Master P. Master P. What the fuck is it, Master P? Hurry up, put my stick. Went down. Yeah. Trip. Yeah, out. man, Silk the Shot. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. What year is this? What year was this? Was probably this is after the first album. Yeah, this was, this was me working on the second album. And I met Pete, like just out yeah. and about promoting and, you know, selling CDs. I met Pete because he was out selling CDs and stuff, too. So I was like, man, come on, man. Let's, let's ride. Let's get together, do some stuff, man. So we got together and I was like, oh, I got a spot. Come on, let's go to New Orleans and uh, and record. And I called Sykes. I said, Sykes, we coming by the studio, man. Come on, let's get this we had in. Big yeah. home veterans at Big Boy Records. All right, Big Boy Records. Yep. Yeah. I had, studio, yeah. I had a studio, the office, and then a, another yep. office for the artists. You know, that's when I met Mystical. Yeah. Yeah. Early. Wait, so you met Mystical when, when Pete was over there? No, this, this, was, no, early. Early. this, this was, was early. This was but, early. Before that, I used to come by Sy's studio and record in, in New Orleans, right? So 
Mystical and who was it? Uh, uh, was Partners in Crime over there too? Pro- yeah, Partners, Partners in, in Crime, Crime, the twin. And, yeah. Um, what, what's your boy in them? Uh, um, man, I can't remember your boy. The Afro Black Minutes. Black Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Black Minutes. Yeah. That was my 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 died from the hood. Black Minutes. That yeah, was yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So so that that was uh, early early nineties, man. You know what I'm saying? It's early. That's it. That's crazy how he, it where he ended, where mystical ended up, and then like even where I like this been boss down. So what? So what's your what's your impression? Because I mean at that you said that's why I was asking about years. So we talking about like ninety four, ninety five. He's still on the grind. He's still trying to find his way, and y'all just kind of just two artists trying to find y'all way. Yeah, two, like two artists trying to find their way, and and you know like in my area, like uh, cause I think uh, Pete was like in California at the time or something, yeah. so he was coming down. But in my area, I was moving. You know, I was moving. I was making moves. I was doing my thing. So, because um, they ended up moving to Baton Rouge too for a good little while. But in my area, I was just moving, getting out, just connecting dots. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, a lot of people had kind of hangups with like dealing with different people and going certain places. I ain't never had that hang up. That was always, I come with respect. You know what I'm saying? I get respect. So I mess with everybody all my whole life. I go different places. I, even out here, when I'm out here, I'm so I associate, I, come on, let's work. Let's do something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was just moving like that back then. So I was running into everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And working with everybody. You know, if I felt like it made sense, you know what I'm saying? Here, let me pay you, man. Let's, let's do what we do. I just keep it pushing. Don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of my thing was, uh, you know, I try, tried to stay focused on a bigger vision. Even when I was younger, just moving around, trying to create something, something great, and I, I never tripped on small stuff. You know what I'm saying? Never had that weakness. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we connected, and we just kept working and just kept going. Cause no matter where they at, it's like, man, dude from Baton Rouge, like I'd be all in L.A., I'd be all everywhere, and you know they'll be like, man, look, man, you way out here, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and I was young then. You know what I'm saying? I was uh maybe probably 20, 21 by then. Yeah. And I was just everywhere, all through Alabama. Because back then, uh, we didn't have the internet. So you had to get out and actually yeah. go to every radio station. You had to go to every club. You had to go meet the DJs. You know what I'm saying? You, we wasn't emailing music. You had to put it in his hand. You know what I'm saying? So every city that we blew up in and we got hot in, we actually had to go. And that was a lot of relationships all through the Midwest, you know, East Coast, West Coast, everywhere, everywhere we went. You know, if, if if you selling records, you know what I'm saying? What, yeah. what were some of your bigger markets outside of uh, Baton Rouge? Oh, uh, all Alabama, all mm-hmm. Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, Memphis, Nashville. I even had a group from Nashville. Um, uh, let me see. All of Florida, like when you go down to Florida and stuff like that. Uh, that that whole south, that whole bottom of the map, you know what I'm saying? They was like really, really on it. When you go up, it was more like the Nashville, the Memphis, you know, stuff like that. You know, Alabama's. Birmingham, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because we used to look on, we went by sound scan then. Yeah. So we uh, look on sound scan and we see, man, what we selling at? You know what I'm saying? And uh, every city that we saw that we got a bite, we getting a little response because they just scan the back. That's the barcode on the back. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll just go. We just pack up the truck and just drive and just go to Nashville or go to Memphis or go to Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. We didn't really uh focus on major markets like uh, uh chicago mm-hmm. uh new york mm-hmm. la like because you can get the money just man you get a ton of money because you got to think like i said we selling cds we getting ten dollars per cd we only paid a dollar to press up this cd so if i get on the road and you know in each city like uh you you, you know even small cities had three or four mom and pop stores yeah you go to a mom and pop store, you got an underground record. They like, okay, I'll buy 100 CDs from you. That's $1,000. So you could just run through the city and stop at four stores and get $4,000. You know what I'm saying? You only yes. spend $400, you won $3,600. So everywhere you yes. stopped, you know what I'm saying? This is what the game was before it became digital. Mm-hmm. So everywhere you stopped, you were just making money. You just pick up on money. And now accounting just selling out the truck. That's why you hear people talk about selling music out the trunk so much back then because the markup was, was I hell. paid a dollar and <laughs> I'm getting paid. Now if you out the trunk you was getting twenty back then for a CD. So yeah. imagine that. Yeah, you hand in hand you was twenty hand in hand you at 20. the stove. You getting twenty you you gotta split that with the stove. Yep. 
You see what I'm saying? But if you can get to, if I can get to you before you get yep. to the stove, I'm getting yeah, the full I'm 20. I'm getting the full 20 because when the stove buy it, they'll pay you 10, but they're going to sell it for 20. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you was going to record stores back then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, you, talk, man, you think I'm a child, man. You just look so young, man. Hey, hey I'm, like, I'm talking to him. You just look so young, man. See, you know what I'm saying? But look, see, like, you don't look your age either, though, bro. All right, I appreciate so, that. Yeah, appreciate you know what I'm saying? Oh, look, what's my age? Not my age. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'll be 50 in a couple of months. Look at your boy. fell out on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, but that, that was the game, and you know, and, and uh, we enjoyed it, man. You know, what I mean, I enjoyed it and stuff like that, and that's how we made money back then. That's why it was such a tussle when people start bootlegging CDs because yeah. it was like, damn, you and just that's, cut, you just took my ten ooh, or my twenty, you just took yes. it, you just took, yeah. it. and actually, that was why artists didn't charge as much for shows back then. You know, show prices skyrocketed once everything went digital and stuff like that. But at one point, you know, artists didn't charge as much for shows like that because they're making so much off CDs. Cause you can do the show set up, then you say you yeah, you sell your CDs. I only sell your CD, but if I go in that city and when I leave, I'm gonna sell ten thousand that week. Yep, that's a hundred thousand yep. dollars. Yep, man, it was stores that that I would go into and they'll be like, hey, I need three hundred. 400 like one store like if you have a, a, a cd coming out one store could sell three four hundred cds and some cities had 30 stores like houston i know had uh 50 you know 50 stores each store is selling a few hundred cds you know what i'm saying it's a lot of money to be made in one day off cds you know what i'm saying you still hustling at this time or you straight music Oh, I'm straight music. I'm straight music. Yeah, I stood down. Like, like once I saw that, I got a taste of that. I stood down on the streets. You know what I'm saying? And and that saved me too. I tell people all the time, man, music saved me. The music business, not just doing music. Yeah. But the actual business of it, and actually learning the business and learning how to get my money off it, just made me feel like, okay, hey, man, that them them that stuff going on out there in the streets, you know, taking them chances, it just wasn't worth it because. Like I say, I spent a dollar on this CD, man, and I'm getting 10, 20 dollars if I'm hand to hand, and you know what I'm saying? It, it just didn't make sense, you know what I'm saying? You know, to be out there risking my life and stuff like that on, on, on you know, on, on, on no bull, you know what I'm saying? So ever since then, I just, I just stuck with the music, man, and just pushed through to the music, you know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of come, a lot, a lot of dudes go, you know what I'm saying? Uh, addicted to doing what they was doing, like in the streets or whatever. But music, money was in the 90s was killing street money home it was like it was ridiculous it was killing street money yeah man so okay you at this time this is our solo records do you go into ceo mode before you get to how you do that that or this is after that well what happened was on that record i had uh an artist young bleed and uh he, he was uh he was on that record he was on three songs on my first album and uh actually in the sixth grade, he wait, was he was your artist first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did I know that shit? Yeah. Oh boy, you got it. You got it. You got it. Hey man, oh, he so. he was the birth of a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, up yeah. there. Young Young Blee was my artist. That's where how you do that. That came from. That's a record that that I put out. That was the remix we did with Master P. The original record I put out. Yeah, it was already hot. Yeah. So we put P on it just like we put P on that other song we came there. And that was a remix. That's why in the beginning he said a remix. That was a remix. He just blew yeah. my mind, dog. Okay, how did you how do you meet Young Bleed? And what is he doing? Like is he buzzing the city? So like how do you even no. get to him? He had never put a record out before. In the sixth grade. I met Young Bleed in the sixth grade. We used to go to school together in the sixth grade. And he was the rapper. And I was his DJ <laughs> in the sixth grade. <laughs> in the sixth grade, dog, uh, he was a rapper and I was a DJ. And then we kind of lost uh, contact for a while. And the next time I ran into him, you know, I was like, oh, you still doing the music? You know, because like I said, I had spent all this money. Because, you know, from the sixth grade to maybe like, you know, I got in high school, I had came up, you know, you know. I was kind of strong in high school, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like in high school, like, hey, man, look, man, what you doing now, man? You won't rap, man. I got a studio, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like that. So uh, he came through, man, and he got on three songs on my first 
CD. He got on three songs on my first CD. Did then, you sign him at that point, or y'all was yeah, just? Yeah, I signed him at that point. Hmm. He, he So he got three on my first, and then he did maybe like three on my second. And we did this compilation. The third one was a compilation called uh, Concentration Camp. And uh, the song How You Do That, that was on there, but it was called Fool. You know what I'm saying? Like a fool in this one. Yeah. The song, mm-hmm. the song was called A Fool. So, uh, you know, P heard the song. He was like, hey, hello, man. I'm telling you, man, I think I could do something with this, man. Let's do a remix. And I'm going to keep y'all on and I'll pay for all the videos, all that kind of stuff. Like, I got to get P his prize, man. Everything he said he was going to do, P always did it with me, man. That man, words just be on point, man. You know what I'm saying? You talking about no paperwork, no nothing. nothing. Words no just be on paperwork. point. You know what I'm saying? So he uh, did the song, did the remix, man. He paid for it. And at that time, uh, he kind of he kind of leveled me up, too, and leveled us up a little bit. Because they was on at that point. Yeah, because it was still this was still the 90s. He kind of leveled me up because... I was still in that same, you know, uh, uh, I was still in the mud, you know, in, in that mud mentality. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I had never been exposed to the Hollywood. Uh, so what would, what, 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 when you give me an example of like where you were and then where he had to take you, like, nah, don't be on Well, we both was coming from the same place as far as uh, family being in the streets and, and, and dealing with everything that was going on. Not necessarily me or him, but just family just family issues them phone calls back from the house them it was the same it was just 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 that all them anchors you got kind of tied to you that started pulling you down even though you got these big visions and big dreams you got all these anchors pulling you down and you know you, you can't just cut them off you know you feel guilty you got to stay down because they they didn't they didn't did some stuff for you you know what i'm saying for you to still be here so so you you you, you got to stay down you, you got to mm-hmm. stand on it you know what i'm saying even though uh it's not beneficial to you at this point you know, when it was, they, they, they stood on it. So now you got to stand on it, even though you turned up, you know. So, you know, we was both kind of going through that same thing, man. Just having to stand on what we stand on, you know what I'm saying? And trying to move forward without, you know, getting caught up. I got caught up. I, you know, I went and did time a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got caught up a couple of so times. So you went back into the streets? Is what you're saying? No, no. I, oh. I went and did time with something else. Okay, you. you know what I'm saying? Violence and shit. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, so we was trying to move forward and instead of trying to keep it real with because that that's that's like a position that I think all successful people from the streets or from the hood go through. You know what I'm saying? I, I think a lot of people don't understand how complicated it is because they feel like, hey, you get money now. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. But they don't understand before what, you get what they did for you. Mm-hmm for you to get there you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so so you know so they don't know what you're standing on and they don't realize that okay i know it's a bunch of money up here but that ain't more important than what what we're standing on at the crib you know what i'm saying and a lot of people just ain't get that so i mean they used to talk about me man look instead of going back to prison this and stuff like that but man you know i had to stand on what i had to stand on you know what i'm saying i don't regret none of that man i'm good with it you know what i'm saying and you know my mom my my resume good you know what i'm saying with all my family my people everything yeah. you know what i'm saying you know and i'm good with that that was priority number one it wasn't getting rich you know what i'm saying not for me anyway you know what i'm saying but that was the struggle that a lot of us had to go through trying to make that transition so p kind of was he, he was ahead of me on making that transition you know for me Cause you know, like we had talks. Like he didn't talk to me, man. Like man, hey, man, look, you gotta chill out, man. You gotta, you gotta, you know, change, do something different. You know, I'm like man, that shit easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? So he had the talks, but he was a little ahead of me, and he sh- showed me some stuff. He took me, man, let's go to L.A., man. I'm saying, cause he was with Priority first, and he had distribution with Priority. So he was like, man, look, come on, man, let's go up there with Priority, cause we was gonna do you how the how you do that there, and. uh I'm going to get on it. We're going to do this. And I'm going to plug in with them. That's going to uh, put you out there on a nationwide scale. And then you got distribution through priority. You know, oh, man, sweet deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sweet deal. You know what I'm saying? But uh, me still being, you know, standing on what I'm standing on, you know, year two, I'm back in prison. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm back in prison or whatever. But uh, that was the situation 
at that time trying to make that transition and trying yeah. to find that balance between the way I grew up and uh, uh, everything I had established, you know what I'm saying, everybody that, that was rocking with me back then to trying to become that businessman and cross over and, you know, be this big music mogul, you know what I'm saying, especially when back then everybody was on after you, like for the police and stuff, man, if you started getting money, there was so much money in music. Yeah. Everybody was just kind of just on your trail, like, you know, they, they want you locked up, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They want you locked up, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that answers your question. You know no, no, that's good. Man, talk about that video, though, that, that how you do that video, man. It looked like it was oh, going man. down. Man. man, that how you do that video was dope, man. That was, uh, we had rented a, 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 a yacht in Malibu mm. and uh, uh, got a bunch of girls, stuff like that. Uh, R.I.P. Tiny Lister, he was there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, everybody got seasick on, on the damn yacht. You know what I'm saying? A lot of girls and stuff, and uh, shit look cool as hell on the yacht. But if you turn that camera around, oh, nothing but jet skis and lifeguards. Oh <laughs> uh, man, that shit, that shit. Look, I gonna tell you, it was so many people just surrounding the boat and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, <clears throat> that was my first major video. You know what I'm saying? That was my first major video. But it wasn't just about the music. It was about exposure. It was about just witnessing that coming from Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? Even from, even Louisiana, period. It was just witnessing business done on that bigger scale. You know what I'm saying? Which, 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 it just changed me a lot. It just gave me a whole different outlook, a whole different perspective on, on, on what was going on. You know what I'm saying? It kind of made me feel like I had been lied to growing up, which, and I'm just saying this because I know a lot of people out there, you know, uh, uh, who trying to make that transition, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and the transition ain't hard for people who just don't care, who just, you know, could turn their back and move on. Transition hard for people who gotta, got something they still got to stand on. You know what I'm saying? Regardless where they at. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that getting out and seeing different things. Like, I used to take my whole, all my people, I used to take them out of town and try to show them stuff that, that uh, like, P was showing me. They ain't really take it though. <laughs> you know, they, they, they really take it. They, they, they ain't get it. They like were getting what you they were getting it how, how I was getting it. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I mean, I see so much going on like right now online and stuff like, you know, just with rappers and stuff like that. And I really be understanding though. Like I, I be understanding because I remember when I was in that position and I had a like, I think I flew 17 of us to LA one time. You know what I'm saying? Out the hood, like 17 of us, like all my main men. We go to LA and we all filming a video. I think the song was called The Sickest. We had rented the mental hospital. We was in straight jackets and all that kind of stuff like that when I was priority. And the whole while we out there, you know, just the conversations, I'm just like, okay, I spent this much to do this and, you know, look at this. Rick James was sitting on the step when we get to the hotel, you know, it's just mm. like, because we was across from the House of Blues. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I'm thinking they they gonna lock in on, on on that, but they just man, they trying to hustle, you know. They trying to see how they could, you know, judge. They not you know? thinking long term. Oh, man. Man. They they just wasn't thinking long term. You know what I'm saying? Man. So you know, so so I understand when I be seeing stuff, what be going on, and I understand the struggle of the person with the vision that be trying to like uh, uh, move forward and take his people with him. You know what I'm saying? But some of them holding on for dear life to the, to the, to the, to the streets, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be able to change that or whatever, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But <clears throat> I know we was talking about the video. I might have drifted a little bit, but no, 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 that's mm -hmm. cool, that's cool. Yeah. man. So okay, did you did you end up getting locked up after that? Like, what happens after how you do that video? Yeah, I got locked up after that. Like right after that? I think it was uh, maybe a year, cause that was in '97, '98. So maybe like a year after that. I got locked up, and and that was when, uh, um, I had just signed some more artists. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, let's get another run. Let's dig yeah. in some more. That was when I signed Lil Boosie, Boosie Badass. You know what I'm saying? How you meet? How do you uh, link up with Boosie? He from my neighborhood, and uh, it, uh, a friend of mine named Frog. He told me, he said, "Man, that's this little kid, man. Um, be over there standing on the corner, man. Got a." Big tablet, man, full of like raps and stuff he wrote. And I asked him to rap for me. You gotta listen at him. 
So I said, all right, all right, bring him around here, Frog. So he bring him around to the studio, because I still had this studio. He bring him around to the studio, and I hear him rap. He might have been 14 or something, 15 or something. I hear him rap, so I'm like, damn. Like, he wasn't saying nothing I ever heard on the radio or no shit like that. I'm talking about this shit was so genuine. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, man, come on. So that was his first album we started working on. It was called uh, Youngest of the Camp. That was his first project we did, but I, I knew from that point because uh, that was his first album, but I put him on a couple of my songs on the camp album because I do these camp albums to introduce artists, and I put him on a couple of my songs, and I had people calling me, and they was like, uh, and I'd be like, hey, man, you all, you heard that? What you think the next single ought to be? And they'll just say shit like, anything that little boy on. <laughs> 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 You know, you know what I'm saying? They was telling me shit like that. Like, man, hey, anything that little boy on. I was like, damn, they, 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 they rocking with him like that out there. You know what I'm saying? They was like, man, I'm telling you, anything that little boy on, man. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to go. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you know as well as me, when you get the right artist, people talk about all this work and grinding and doing all that. If you hit the right frequency, that shit cut through so damn fast. That shit spread like a... Uh, uh, like King George, keep on rolling. <laughs> you know, you know, yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, it's, it's roll. Because it, if, if you, you catch that wave and you that can, artist, you catch that yeah, wave, that it. they hard it when you get an artist with the it, man. It, it just it cut out at least seventy five percent of the work. Yeah, mm. at least seventy five percent of the work, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, he, he just had the it ever since the beginning. He just had the it, man, and and and. It just kept going, and unfortunately, when I went, uh, I got caught up, and I had to go sit down for a little while, I go lay down for a little while. He was under contract, and I was like, and you know, a couple of dudes I know from Baton Rouge that's starting the label, you know, and uh, they sent somebody to talk to me, to ask me if it was cool, you know, they messed with him, whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm going to be gone a few years or whatever. So I knew the living was going to blow. So I was like, okay, well, let's take care of the business. I mean, it's cool. Ain't no sense in me, you know, little one sitting down while, while I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? And that was uh, Trill Entertainment. You know what I'm saying? So that's how he went to Trill, you know, and before, you know. And then when I got out uh, a few years later, you know, we right back in the studio. We did some more songs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Relationship still what it is to this day. You know what I'm saying? How how was Pimp C involved with the whole Boosie thing? Oh, uh, I ain't. I'm, is that I'm, from y'all or that's from? No, what that's it, from uh, Trill Trill Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah, I, I don't know what the what what the agreement was or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what that was. I don't know whether he owned or whatever. I don't know what that was. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know they they found a way to get their thing going, man, and, and and move it forward. You know what I'm saying? And they just. They know how to capitalize on it and keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? They got Webby, man. They got man. They got some bangers. Mm. Was Webby around back then? No, no. Mm -hmm. okay. he wasn't around back then. He came along uh, after. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he came along after. Mm. What you yeah, gonna say, man? Nah, it's you, 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 you hitting all the power points. Yeah. I'm letting you go. <laughs> I'm letting you go, man. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm letting it go, man. That's 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 my big dog right there. I'm letting it go. You know, you, 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 he he been that man, bro. He been that man. You know, from from the boots hit and stuff, and, and and then, like I said, he taught me so much stuff without even knowing. Like twenty years ago, he taught me like I transitioned from the ASR ten to MPC to this digital stuff because he always been ahead of the curve. Yeah, came I in tell. the studio one day, man, what is you doing uh, with all this shit? Yeah. <laughs> I like, tell everybody. Got man, nah, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I'm like, man, what? I've been, that's been my glue ever since. Hmm. Man, I tell everybody, but when it comes to technology, man, you got to jump on it. Yeah, he always ahead of the curve. The jump on cameras it. and the shooting yeah. and the business and the, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I follow a lot of his leads. Even when it come to uh, recording from two inch to, uh, remember uh, the ADATs? 
Yeah. We had eight, yeah. I remember the 1680s. Yeah, the A-Dats. Uh, then I went to the D88 Taz. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. Them Every Taz time they came out with something new to record on, even Pro Tools, when they came Pro Tools, oh, I need it. Every time they come with something new, boom, I got to get it. I got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to stay ahead of the curve. You know what I'm saying? Trying to stay ahead of the curve. So when when did you start getting into production and all that? Oh, man, that was, uh, that was early 90s, too. That was before, uh, maybe 93, 94, something when... Um, when uh, I used to go to uh, Club Rumors with uh, yeah. KL, yeah, yeah, KL, these at the Club Rumors, yeah, and uh, I went by KL house. He was like, "Man, my boy uh, from Cali sent me this keyboard, man. You know what I'm saying? I make B song. I was like, right, let me check it out. He's showing me, and I'm writing stuff down. Cause when you no phone, I'm writing it down. Like, How you do that, KL? Yeah, the boom. So I was like, all right. So I went and bought one. You know what I'm saying? And when I went and bought it, that's when I uh, uh, started playing around, practicing, stuff like that. And uh, shit, eventually I got good. So it got to the point to where I was producing at least 50% hmm. of my projects until I, uh, well, I was doing 50%. The other 50% was done by, damn, I forgot Happy. You know what I'm saying? Happy P. Yeah. You know, when he was a kid. Happy uh, Careers? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I met Happy P. He lived with me when he was a kid, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Happy Perez. Yeah. SPM and Miguel yeah. and all this other shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They used to come down in New Orleans. Yeah. That's I how I met Happy. Yeah. That's how I was like, dog. That's my dog. Yeah. <laughs> when, 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 when he was a kid, he was in Baton Rouge. He was in high school with Max Manelli and them. You know what I'm saying? And uh, his family wanted to uh, leave and he wanted to stay. So I was like, okay, well, you can come live with me. And I'm going to tell you a crazy story. They told me he used to make beats, right? He had a Casio keyboard, you know, the kind you buy at Walmart. And when you flip it over, it didn't have a back on it. All the wires like was like hanging out and shit. You know what I'm saying? So when I say play something, he'll play something. And I'll be like, damn, you made that on that shit right there? So I was like, all right, I got something for you. Come on. Whole studio. Guitars. I went to buying guitars, all kind of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? And he lived with me uh, for years, just in the studio. He produced how that's who produced how you do that there. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. Man, stop it, man. Yeah. That's who produced how you do that there. Happy. Mm -hmm. Man, stop it. Yeah. Yeah, that big. That big yeah. line. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's who yeah. produced how you do that there. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's who produced how you do that. Just blew my mind, man. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when 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 he came out here, that's that's when I met uh, South Park. He's telling about South Park, and I used to come out here and uh, uh, what was it, downtown somewhere, dope house downtown. Whatever. And uh, me and South Park did some music too. Mm -hmm. We did some music back then too. But uh, yeah, so it was over at the studio. It was me, Happy. Young Bleed, Boosie, um, Boo, Boo Rossing, mm -hmm. with uh, CTE. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, he's with the camp too. Yeah. yeah I remember Boo. <laughs> you remember Boo? Yeah, yeah Boo Rossing, Boo. yeah. That's yeah, how he's I from know Jackson, from, Mississippi. From, from, yeah. from, 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 from I knew he was from Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. he was Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was on the camp album. The camp album was me, him. Okay, I thought yeah. he was from Baton Rouge for the longest yeah. until. Yeah. He 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 uh he was on he's part of the camp too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, you had some <laughs> shit going on, man. Yeah. Boss, man. No, he part of the camp too. So, I mean, I'm I'm just glad that everybody that that was around at that time, from Boo to Max Manelli to Happy to Boosie to man, uh, everybody learned something, and everybody was able to take it and just keep going. You know what I'm saying, and developing the, as even at the age we're not, ain't no, everybody, ain't nobody hurting. Everybody doing, you know, everybody was able to do what they do and keep it going. They are doing good. Yeah. So that's 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 what I'm most proud of is that everybody back then, you know, got something from it that they still today could feed their families off and they, you know, and feed them good. Everybody living nice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From from that and taking that and growing and doing what they doing. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's that's what's up. Hey, can you do the verse? Somebody do that? Huh? Can you do the? <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> can you do the yeah. verse? Somebody do that? 
wicked when I kick it wicked, you don't hear me though. When I hit the dope, just hit the flow, time to go. Pay the cost to be the boss in this rap shit. About as wicked as it's gonna get. In the industry, I be bringing the action. In this musical fashion, if you don't know, fool, you better ask them. Now who's that making that funky noise? It's the locs that coming through with all his boys. <laughs> Classic. And don't get full Look of that, that alcohol, alcohol in the club and, and think you bad. Cause if y'all niggas start fucking up, somebody yeah, gonna whoop, whoop your ass. ass. <laughs> Classic. Classic, man. Classic. Man, I appreciate you coming through, man. Oh he man, it's all good. It's all good. He got some other stuff coming. So he 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 gonna be back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta get you some music too, man. Uh, oh yeah, most definitely. I got, I got a lot of um, new stuff. Uh, I've been doing too. I got an album I'm working on now. I got a uh, a video I put up recently called uh, "Gangster C Lo Gangster." You know what I'm saying? I got another one called uh, "C Lo Stand on That." You know what I'm saying? They're on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They doing good too. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Well, yes, it's what you got, man. Before we close it up, man. Ain't nothing, man. Like, subscribe. I know you don't ask them to, but hey, I need y'all to follow your boy. Uh -huh. Real precise. Uh -huh. IG, you feel me? There you go, yeah, man. You're right. So, IG, check me out on IG. C Log Big Dog. C L O C B I G G D A W G. Man, uh, ready, man. Follow me. I'm down in Houston. I am D O N N I. I be fucking my shit up every time. I am D O N N I E H O U S T O N. Instagram, Twitter, all that. You know what I mean? It's Down East Podcast. C Log Sice. Hey, man, whip out here. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Subscribe to the Donnie Houston Podcast, man.